Welcome to Crooks Investor. First of all, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. That helps us to understand if this is the sort of programming you'd like us to be producing for you. You can also leave your comments below. That helps us with the questions you think we should be asking, how you think we've done, of course, what you thought of Galliano Gold. You can also catch this as a transcript, an article, or a podcast on cruxinvestor.com. And of course, for our Crux Investor Club members, you get early access to this interview along with training videos and commentary from market experts from all around the world. And if you haven't already done so, please click the button in the corner of the screen to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, for more videos like this, click the notification bell. We spoke earlier today to Greg McCann, who is the CEO of Galliano Gold. They're listed on NYSE and also on the TSX, about 375 million market cap, up 50% from when we spoke to them earlier in June. Now, we are quite drawn to and attracted to Greg's uh, business plan and how he's going to deliver it. They ch markedly changed the company and the way that it focuses uh, on driving cash rather than just delivering ounces. Um, the project is the Asanko project, which is a JV with um, gold fields. Um, it's throwing off about 240 to 250,000 ounces uh, of gold a year. And they're on course uh, to deliver the same again uh, this financial year too. So uh, reasonably substantial operation. We talk about where the sex and sizzle is. Where's the growth coming from? They've actually just signed off uh, an additional 10 million on top of the original 10 million of expiration budget to deliver some in additional economic ounces, or at least that's the plan. So fascinating conversation, great company good planning and enough cash to be able to give them the optionality that they need. On top of that, they've also put in place a $300 million facility, and that's going to give them the ability to actually look at additional M&A activity to get away from that single asset um, accusation that's thrown at them on occasion. So take a look at the description at some of the topics we discuss. Anything interests you in particular, click on the number beside that topic. That's a timestamp, not jump you through to that part of the interview. But otherwise, sit back and enjoy what Greg has to say. Greg, how are you doing, sir? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, it's good to have you back. Good to have you back. We uh, particularly enjoyed hearing your story, the kind of, uh, sort of little turnaround story um, last time we spoke, which was only at the beginning of June, so it's not that long ago, but I suspect you've been uh, a very, very busy in quite trying times. So wanted to take a chance to catch up. But if you could, for people new to this story, missed it the first time around, can you give us that one minute overview of the business? Absolutely. So Galliano Gold, I'm Greg McCann, I'm the CEO. Uh, Galliano is a gold producing company. We operate the Asanko Gold Mine. It's located in Ghana, West Africa. Now, the mine is a 50-50 joint venture between Galliano and Goldfields, with Galliano as the operator. Now, last year, the mine produced about 251,000 ounces of gold at an all-in sustaining cost of around $1,100 an ounce. And we expect more of the same this year in 2020. And we'll talk about that as we get into it. Looking at, us, at Galliano corporately, uh, we do trade under the ticker GAU on both the New York Stock Exchange and the TSX. I think our market cap this morning when I walked into this uh, interview, Matt, was about uh, 375 million US. I think that's up about 50% since the last time we spoke uh, in early June, uh, sitting here in late August now. Uh, corporately, also at, at, as, from a balance sheet perspective, uh, we did have a great second quarter, which I'm sure we'll talk about, continued to build cash on the balance sheet. We're sitting with about 68 million in cash at the end of Q2, and of course, no debt. Beautiful summary. Okay, I'm, and we are going to talk about. We're going to hit all of, all of those points, but I the, I want to talk again, if you don't mind, because I just think it's differentiated. It differentiates you as an individual. Differentiates the company. Um, if we can go over what we talked about before, you said to me, um, I want to move from producing myself from producing ounces to producing cash. Now that seems like quite an innocuous statement, but because most businesses, all in fact, all businesses should be in the business of producing cash. But miners, especially when you get a little bit bigger, you, they forget that they start plowing money back into the ground. They stop forgiving. Stop. They stop giving money back to shareholders. They stop doing things which are creative in value. So, can you just talk us around that time? Because you came back in and had a look at the company and came up with that idea pretty early on. So what were the things that you had to instigate and put in place? Again, this is probably for people new to this story um, and a little bit for me because I, I quite enjoyed it the first time around. Yeah, no problem. We can rehash some of that. So just going back about a year and a half when I came back to the company as CEO, which we went through in my last interview and how I ended here. You know, as you said, there was a, there was a real 
I think, culture that had developed at the Sanko Gold Mine, where over the first, this mine's been in production for four, four years, just over four years now, commercial production. Uh, during the first three years, um, you know, the company essentially eroded its balance sheet. The mine didn't distribute any cash back to the back to the parent companies, the joint venture partners, and any cash that was generated all went back into the ground in terms of the capital improvements. And it was really actually a pretty decent EBITDA margin at the mine with about 300 million in EBITDA generated over the first three years of production. All of that and some of the company's treasury actually got reinvested in the mine. And so last year we set about trying to make the most of those investments and looking at the development of the mine going forward in conjunction with our joint venture partners on trying to optimize the assets that we already have, which is a 5.4 million ton per year, SAG, ball mill, CIL processing facility, multiple open pit uh, operations. Um, and, and we came up with this plan back in, we published it back in February uh, in a new technical report. We've got a 10 year mine life, uh, very little development capital being spent across that 10 years, producing um, anywhere between 230 and 250,000 ounces a year of gold at, at an all-in sustaining cost of just over $1,100 an ounce on average for those 10 years. And so obviously what this has allowed us to do is to really, instead of focusing on making the mine bigger and better, is focusing on generating cash flow. And I think that's really shown over the last nine months. Um, the last three quarters, the mine has distributed 95 million to the joint venture partners. So 47 and a half million to Galliano's account. And that's allowed us to really repair our balance sheet, which was quite strained in the middle of last year with less than $10 million in treasury to where we are today, which is a much stronger position. Okay. But again, I just want to pick up on phrases here because I, I, I'm, we're trying to educate people um, as to you know what to look for, for in terms of fundamentals around business. And I think what you've done, what you've changed is really quite unique. Very few companies um, that we've spoken to have, have come about it, gone at it like you have. So you said that, you know, instead of trying to build a, a, a big and successful mine, we focus on returning cash. But those two things aren't mutually exclusive. It's a question of how you go about building up a, a, a big and meaningful mine, you know, how you allocate that cash, uh, when you allocate that cash, and what the expectations are around the returns on that cash invested. Absolutely. And so, so I think one of the, the most significant changes that we've made is really, again, the discipline around how you spend that capital and looking at the, the return on invested capital very carefully. And realistically, you know, mining is inherently a capital intensive business, as I think we, we talked about last time. And there, there's really no way around, you know, you, you, we will have to invest some capital and you'll certainly see here in our second half of the year, you know, we've got tailing storage facility lifts, we've got new pits that we're shifting into. There's sustaining capital to get spent, but that capital is allocated carefully. And, uh, you know, we target it at a minimum a 15% uh, rate of return at what we consider to be reasonable gold prices of $1,300 an ounce gold. And if, if you stay focused on that and uh, really focused on generating that return, I think that brings that discipline, but also what you need to avoid having un unintended spends of capital is and again, this is the second change that we really made is, is in round planning. And if you, if you don't have a good solid plan in front of you with where you're going, um, right now we're working on a really highly defined three-year business plan. Ideally, that would be five. You know, a 43-101 technical report, life of mind plan is not a business plan. You know, it's an indication of what the asset's capable of. It's a, it's a backup for your reserve statement that shows that your reserves in the ground can be economically extracted but it doesn't have all the details that are required to carefully plan out and allocate capital. And that's the, that's one of the biggest changes that we've made in the last year and a half is really working on our forecasting our budgeting, going back and, and looking back against the forecast that we made and finding out ways we went astray and where we, where we could make improvements and continually improving that forecasting and planning process and stretching it out from your annual business plan. So right now we're working on the three-year three-year front. Okay, so to, uh, talk about forecasting. You said to me last time we spoke, early June, uh, Q1's been spectacular. Q2 should be more of the same. Clearly, you didn't know what was coming down the line. So how have things been? So Q2 was was really a solid quarter at the Asanko Gold Mine. Uh, as you said, we were expecting when we spoke in June that it was going to be a decent quarter. Uh, we, ha we had another record quarterly production from the mine, so 69,000 ounces of gold production. That brings our total year to date up to just over 135,300 ounces. So well on track to achieve our guidance of between 225 and 245,000 ounces for the year. 
Similarly for costs, uh, you know, we were off to a, a real uh, a good start in Q1. Uh, in the second quarter, our all-in sustaining costs were slightly higher as we started to lift on the tailing storage facility. And uh, they, they ended up at $1,067 per ounce. So brought our, that brought our year-to-date total at to about $930 an ounce. And again, well below our guidance of between $1,000 and $1,100. And so, as I said, the cash flow continued in the quarter. We distributed $30 million uh, to the joint venture partners from the mine in Q2. I continued to build our balance sheet. I think also very importantly in Q2, which was something we've been pushing for for a while, um, is really one of the one of the challenges that this company had uh, maybe going back two or three years is that it didn't have access to capital when it really needed it. And you know that can happen in the mining business, especially for junior mining companies. And one of the things that we came what I tried to do when we came back is to make sure that never happened again. And so, Late last year, we took our first step, which would be put in place a $30 million revolving mine of credit at the joint venture level. Just gives us ac- approved, improved access to working capital. And you would have seen this quarter, certainly investors would have seen that we filed a $300 million base shelf prospectus in conjunction with a $15 million at the market financing prospectus. Now, clearly we don't need any money right now. We're generating lots of cash flow, but these are really important tools to have in your financial toolkit that it give us flexibility in the future going forward. You know, what we're trying to do here, I think the message we've been trying to get across, certainly in these interviews, is we're trying to build a proper business here. And you know, a, a strong business requires access to capital at the right times. And so you know, I think you can look for us to have those financial tools in place all the time. As shelves expire and ATMs expire, we'll renew them. And just, uh, I think it's good business practice right now. And so that was also an important milestone that we hit, strong operational performance, strong financial performance, and then, you know, continuing to put the business in a position where it can be successful going forward. No, I, I get, I get that, and there's a there's a cost to that, but there's a there's an opportunity cost in having that facility available rather than looking for it when you need it. Um, so that gives us some clues as to the sorts of optionality that you're thinking about. Three hundred million bucks is that's a big chunk of change. So. I'm going to maybe try and match that up to one of the criticisms that you do face, one of the few criticisms you do face, which is you're a single asset company. Should we read anything into this 300 million facility and M&A activity? I think what we've been trying to do for the last year and a half is really try to position ourselves for what's next, which, you know, as the title of our, of our, you see on our web page is building a sustainable business. And, you know, fundamentally mining, um, you know, has risks and challenges associated with. It's got periods of capital investment that are required where you're going to be pushing back a pit or doing some sort of significant investment. So having a single asset inherently exposes you to market timing on gold prices and whatnot. So absolutely, we wanted to put ourselves in a position where we can now look to grow the business, to add a second operating asset. You know, if you go back a year and a half, uh, we were in no position to do that. We didn't have a credible life of mind plan. We didn't have any money. We didn't necessarily have the right the right people in the right in the right places, and uh, and certainly we didn't have the financial tools to be able to to finance or do any anything like that. So, what we've been trying to do over the last year and a half is put ourselves in a position where we've been able to do that. Now, we've been adding personnel and board members to build that management team and that credibility and experience of building businesses. Um, we've, we've improved our financial consi- position considerably, and you saw some of the final pieces being put in place there in Q2. And then uh, in conjunction with it, we've got the mine running with a credible life of mine plan in front of us. So I think for the first time, and certainly in the last year and a half, we're in a position where we can now start to have those conversations and do that work. And certainly we're active and we're looking at opportunities. And um, like I think we said last time we spoke, we want to make sure when the opportunity presents itself that we're ready. We don't have to do anything. But it does take, it's not a switch that you can just flick on to go from, uh, to go to the ready stage. So uh, we're, we've done a lot of the good work here in the first half of this year, and I think we're in a good position for H2. Okay, so you put yourself in a position to be able to, you know, put that type of facility in place because you've shown the ability to generate cash, manage cash, distribute cash, and save or shave costs. Um, can we just talk about the cost component there? Obviously, the ASICs just popped up again because you, you, you were talking about the tailings facility and the lifting, et cetera. But that was part of the plan. Are you on target to consistently deliver gold answers at less than a thousand bucks? Yes. So let's let's talk about the the outlook. I think for the second half and maybe where we're going for next year, because I think that's you know you absolutely this is critical. 
and was one of our main objectives when we spoke last time is trying to drive the cost structure down. So, you know, first and foremost, I think you, everyone should take note that we did reiterate our production and cost guidance um, for, for 2020. So we are uh, tracking according to our plan, but uh, without giving quarterly guidance specifically here, I think everyone can do the math. You know, the first half of the year uh, was, was very heavy production loaded and very low cost because we weren't uh, spending much of anything in terms of sustaining capital. So right now in the third quarter, we're in a very important transition period for the mine. This is actually, this is the most important three months of the mine over the next two and a half years. Essentially what's happening is we're transitioning out of uh, one of our main pits called NCRAN, which we've been mining, we've been mining at for the last four years. Uh, we finished mining the second phase of ore there at, at the end of Q2. And we moved out of that pit now and, and shifted to a smaller satellite pit called Aquasiso. Obviously supporting uh, that Aquasiso supporting where the main driver of production is gonna come from now, where we have about 1.5 million ounces of our 2.4 million ounces of resources, the main Asasi pit, uh, where we've been mining now for a year and a half. So as we've shifted out of NCRAN and into Aquasiso, what that means is we're gonna be, we're gonna be faced with lower grades. The reserve grades at Aquasiso are lower as they are at, at Asasi. So we'll be mining, we'll be producing between 1.25 and 1.35 gram per ton along with our reserve grade uh, uh, from those two pits, which means our production levels are gonna come down slightly. You know, so if you look at our mill throughputs and our recoveries, you know, we're gonna be sitting in that 60,000 ounces uh, per quarter, that 240,000 ounces a year. Um, you know, when things go a little bit better, they'll be a little stronger, when they're a little, little slower, they'll be a little off that back and forth. But what you can expect basically for the next two and a half years is production levels around that. And certainly the other important transition here in Q3 is that this is an important quarter for a couple of key sustaining capital expenditures. We are doing a pushback of the Assassin main pit that's gonna really benefit us throughout the second half of the year and into 2021. So you can expect stripping costs to be higher there. And importantly, we're finishing up the fifth phase of our tailing storage facility, which started in Q2, but really the bulk of that work is happening in, in Q3. So you're gonna see that Q3 will be our certainly our highest all-in sustaining cost quarter for the year. Now we're comfortable, we're still gonna hit our guidance. This was going according to the plan, but the, the nature of the, the all-in sustaining cost metric, unfortunately, you know, when we do things like stripping, we capitalize it and amortize it from an accounting perspective over the ounces that are open. But for all in sustaining costs, we adhere to World Gold Council standards and run all those costs through in the quarter they're incurred. So there's some bump, bumpiness in the in the in the ASIC. So, but having said all that, importantly, you know, when we talked about the life of mine, I think your question, Matt, was where, where are we heading in our cost reduction strategies? And certainly, um, you know, we we were very keen at the start of this year. We published a life of mine plan that showed all in sustaining costs over the 10-year period, averaging just over eleven hundred dollars an ounce. You know, in our mind, that's a, that's a, too high. Where we set ourselves an objective to be able, and we feel like we can drive the cost structure down to about that thousand dollar an ounce level, or reduce the cost by a hundred dollars an ounce. It's a big target. The bulk of that was targeted at around uh, from our mining uh, operations, which are contract mining. That we felt we could possibly take fifty cents a ton out of our mining costs. Which, uh, to put that in perspective, we move about thirty million tons a year, so that's fifteen million dollars in savings right there. Now, uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, you know, retendering these strategic mining contracts hasn't been as easy as we would have we would have liked. It's really difficult to mobilize contractors into Ghana. The borders have been closed there. Whilst we've been able to keep the mine running and keep the existing contractor going, it's been it's been somewhat challenging running a proper tender process because we're limited to those people who can supply equipment within country. So, I think what we're doing is we're working now on sort of a modified version of that. We're really trying to optimize 2021 to capture as much of the cost as we can and trying to drive that mining cost down. But I'd say if, you know, if we can get between 50 and 70% of those savings for 2021, I think that would be a really good outcome in the backdrop of where we're at currently. The other interesting aspect to this is, you know, cost savings also come from finding more economic answers. So we talked previously about expiration. So I just want to understand, you know, how you... I guess you've gone through a period of the, it's been a sort of tricky, tricky, you know, few months for all, all mining companies, obviously. Um, but have you had to sort of reassess how you allocate capital against exploration uh, specifically? Yeah. So fortunately, you know, switching gears to exploration, it's one of the things that we've been able to keep going very strongly. And in the second quarter was a really good start to our exploration program. 
you know, we were quite excited about it when we spoke back in June. We didn't really have any of the results coming out yet. So, you know, we've now published two two news releases. And, and in, basically, from our exploration perspective, in Q2, we were focused on trying to expand our reserve base around the two satellite pits, what we're going to be using for the next two years. In, instead of NCRAN, we're going to be mining out of these two satellite pits to support the Asasi deposit. One's called Aquasiso, which we mentioned we're mining now. The other is called Abore, which is located about 10 kilometers north of the processing plant. Both of, we ran pretty extensive drill programs at both of those uh, pits, and we were successfully able to expand the, res the reserve base. And that, those, no those numbers will be quantified in our year-end reserve update, but we're now busy doing the mine planning. We published uh, all the drill results. We've added a third phase of mining at Aquasiso, where we're mining now. We were meant to be finished up there in January. We're busy working on the new plan for 2021, and I think we'll be mining there well into the year. So that's a tremendous improvement to the business. It means we don't have to go and open up a new pit, establish new haul roads, uh, put in fuel bays, you know, all the things that contractor mobilization, et cetera, that go along with moving the operations. So, you know, those are, those are things that we've been successful at in exploration, and we might have found only, you know, three or 400,000 ounces of additional reserves there. So it's not a an overly dramatic change, but it dramatically improves the business over the next two years, which is what the whole purpose of that Q2 program was. So we're, we're very happy with the way that's turned out. And in Q3, we've shifted gears now to something, you know, to, towards more of a, you know, more sizzle perhaps in, in terms of finding a new discovery. And so we've shifted the drills to a twofold. Uh, first to our target, which is about 10 kilometers south of the processing plant. It's called Miradani. And we haven't had any reserves declared on here. Uh, we have had some historical drilling that we did last year in 2019. It was very successful, showed some nice wide intercepts of higher grade mineralization. This is a this is a has a strong potential to be the next pit that we bring into production. And we're focusing our drilling right now um, on a starter pit, which we think has the ability to maybe have a couple hundred thousand ounces of short-term reserves that we can even get into the mine plan next year or in 2022. Again, trying to make that business better. But really, Miradani is going to, it's a, it's a three kilometer long mineralized trend. It's going to require us to continue to work on it for probably the next year and a half of drill, running drilling programs. And you know, we're quite excited about this. This could be the next multi million ounce deposit that we find on the Sanka Grawa gold belt. I think that's where some real sizzle is going to come for investors who are following this, where we start to get some results from this. And hopefully, we'll see some, uh, some similar results to what we saw in, in 2019, which were quite nice. Okay. So, all of that, all of that is continuing to develop again into this three to five year business plan to try and improve upon what we have now, drive the cost structure down, find higher margin ounces than the ones that we had in our existing mine plan. Okay, and that's the exciting bit, being able to identify higher margin ounces uh, going forward. But you're, you're sitting on what, 27, 21,000 hectares. Um, so the question I've got, I ask as an investor, okay, you're generating and throwing off a lot of free cash. At the moment, okay. What, what do you think you'll end the year with on, on the current plan? Yeah, so if we continue, like first, let's just assume we continue at today's gold prices. You're looking at, you know, you're looking at margins where we're going to continue to produce significant amounts of cash flow. You know, in in theory, we could finish the year 80 million in, in cash on the balance sheet. Um, you know, continuing to spend on exploration at the mine site and maybe even accelerating that exploration program. You know, we had a budget of 10 million dollars this year. Um, our board approved us to increase that to 20 million for the year, which would allow us to really get at some of the, you know, the higher, the longer term of targets that we're, you know, currently not working on. Um, now the J joint venture still needs to approve that budget, so we're working with getting that through Goldfields. But uh, you know, they have the same view that we do that this is a, a tremendous land package. We've got most of one of the up and coming gold belts on Ghana tied up here in our 21,000 hectare land package and. Yeah, I think unlocking that potential is something that can create a lot of value for Cheryl. That's exactly where I was going. I wanted to know how much more money you could throw out this because if you, you're, you're right. The the story is good, it's solid, but you you kind of you've seen the the value attributed to the work that you've done. You've got you've talked about some exploration. Um, you know when we talked previously, and you've been talking about it since the beginning of the year. But the sex and the sizzle comes from being able to find a meaningful resource and you know from what you're saying there's an extra 10 million bucks so how do you apportion that you can't go wild you've got to be rigorous thoughtful so what are you going to do with that extra 10 million bucks 
Yeah, so we're going to continue to develop Mary Danny, which we think is, is very important. So the original plan had us just really focusing on this starter pit. Um, our intention would be to continue to continue to drill there beyond the end of Q3, keep going into Q4, go for the whole year, run, continue to run our drill program. We can increase the number of drills that we have turning there. Um, that's something that you know, right now we're sitting with three drills turning. We've been slowly increasing our capabilities on site, our geological capabilities and building our exploration team, which you know, they're very strong local Ghanaian geologists who we've been able to bring on board. And our SVP exploration, Paul Klipfeld, who uh, we've joined the company in April, who's leading this program. Um, we, we did manage to get Paul into Ghana. He's on, on the mine site and he's expecting to be there for, for a big chunk of time this year overseeing this program. So focusing on Miradani, but also continuing to advance some of the targets immediately to the west of the processing facility. We did acquire a new concession, which we slotted in. It's an exploration level concessions. It's got three advanced targets on it that we're busy doing the groundwork on now. That's something that we, we acquired earlier this year. We've been getting ready to uh, start to drill those. And I think we could be in a position subject to, again to JV approvals and a budget, which we're busy developing to drill those in the fourth quarter, which had, I think, again, just continue to build the story, continue to build the story of trying to improve the business through exploration. Well, certainly deliver more of a growth component to the story, which I think the market might react positively to. Um, Last time we talked, you said four or five names uh, hold 60% of the company. They're they're meaningful. They're they're with you. Are they all still with you? Are you seeing any issues with any of them? Not that I'm aware of. We did the last filings and certainly all the meetings we've had in the back of Q2. I think generally our, you know, our, our, Biggest and, and most supportive shareholders are all still there. Um, you know, we've got their backing to continue with our strategy here. I do think that we put a tremendous amount of work in, into into our investor relations activities in Q2, and really trying to get this get the story out on the street of what we're trying to do here and building a sustainable business. And it's I think it's working. If you, uh, you know, if you tracked our volumes and our, our liquidity, our trading volumes, quarter over quarter, uh, certainly uh, Q2 has been the best quarter we've had since 2015 so uh and it's the volumes have almost tripled since where they were in the fourth quarter of last year and you know partly that's the macro environment obviously you know retail investors becoming interested in in the gold space and generalists starting to return but i think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg of that now and um you know our volumes now are sufficient that we would qualify for a readmission to the gdxj which we're not a part of right now and as as you know with you know, the trend towards passive investment is very important to be a part of the indices. We certainly meet the market cap criteria, but we do need, need now three of these periods in a row where we meet the liquidity criteria. And we've got the first one under our belt here on the September uh, September rebalancing. We'll, we'll have met the, for the first time in a long time the liquidity constraints. Okay. And and are you seeing some selling um, from part, some parties? I mean, I guess it's a normal part of trading business. People you know, have different strategies, but any unexpected selling? Surprisingly, we haven't, Matt. I, I'm actually fully expecting it, and I certainly wouldn't blame any of the bigger investors who were astute enough to invest in uh, in in the company when we were trading at, you know, 85 cents a share, and we're now trading, you know, well over $2. You know, that's a, that's a very short turnaround in, in, a, in a year and a half. So, um, but we haven't seen that. You know, I think that um, you know the, the bigger the bigger names have maintained their positions. We haven't seen any anything other than a few hundred thousand shares trading around the margins, which is typical uh, in any environment. So, it's uh, it does mean that we got to work hard on that the forty percent that does really free trade. We need to you know work hard to improve that liquidity there. And we I think we've been we've met our objectives certainly for the last quarter. A gold fill is going to help you find an additional asset to put into the portfolio. You know, potentially they could. Um, we haven't certainly asked them for any help in that in that respect. Um, you know, this, they're, they're facing some of their own changes, as you probably saw, um, senior management changes at, at that level, uh, at, at the Goldfields uh, level. So right now, um, you know, we continue with our, with our relationship with Goldfields as is. We operate the mine, we produce the plans, and we certainly work within the joint venture structures to get those approved. Um, we don't have anything longer term strategic that's brewing with Goldfields who are they quite focused on their own on their own knitting right now, and uh, rightly so. They've got some. Good, they've got a really nice project in Chile that's looking like it's starting under development, and certainly Nick Holland's transition to his predecessor next year will, I think, consume some of the some of their focus over the next twelve months. Okay, great, Greg. Look, great update. Um, 
like what you're doing. Um, I, I like that you're sticking to the plan. I, I also like that you've increased the exploration budget. It does bring that sex and sizzle to the party. Um, stay in touch. Let's know how those uh, trail results uh, you know, pan out for you. Absolutely. You can look for some news releases coming out here in the short term on, uh, on exploration. I think that'll be the key catalyst uh, as we go forward, along with continuing to deliver, obviously, from the mine and keeping the focus on cash flow.